if somebody wants a pedal board made, come to Johnny Gomez. Play the damn song already, man. Shit. Yo, welcome to Cute Rigs. I'm Johnny G. Today, we are with the incomparable, the illustrious, the most fashionable, the infamous <laughs> Joshua Ray Gooch, everybody. Guitar extraordinaire. Does a couple of little gigs here and there. Uh, we'll probably get into that. Uh, I think we met through our buddy uh, John Sasson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. John Sasson told me about you. Rave, well, I would say raved about you. Rave. We, I, I, was, I was on, a, I was on a long walk and I decided to call John and talk to him. We ended up talking for like two hours. And um, we got into, you know, we talked about life and then we got into gear and then that was like, you know, well over an hour of talking. Yeah. But he told me about the situation, like, you know, and, and maybe you can briefly tell people, you made John sort of like this modular dual pedal board yeah. rig where he's like he had a wet and dry board massive system yeah that dude he wanted basically to be able to use both rigs for guitar and synths and he wanted a dry board with all his drives his pitch effects his synth stuff and then another wet board for stereo modulations and delays and echoes and things like that um and uh yeah, he just showed up with a bunch of shit, and he was like, what do I do? <laughs> I well, was like, yeah. The reason I, 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 I mean, John's one of my best friends. I talk to him all the time, but another reason it was important for me to talk to John was we do similar things. We're like, we both tour, but when we're in LA, we do a lot of session stuff, and yeah. also some production stuff, yeah. too. So we kind of, I know John does more utility stuff in addition, which is part of his rig, because he right. plays keyboards and yep. stuff. Um, I don't really do that as much or really at all. It's mainly guitar and just, you know, some stringed instruments. But when I talked to him, he, he told me, he was like, this guy really knows what he's doing. He's a young guy and he's like, he's hungry and he's still like, really like cares about the stuff, you know, Can I which, say? you know, what happens in the music <laughs> industry where, you know, people that have been doing stuff for a really long time, they can be really good at stuff, but they get a little bit lazy with yeah. it. And that, ha that just happens across the board. It doesn't matter if it's, builders or pedal board people or musicians it just kind of happens over time and like john just really liked that you seem to really care about his rig and cool. <laughs> so then we got in touch yeah we talked on the phone for an hour and as yep. soon as i got the phone i called john i was like this guy's making my board well shit so Thanks. you know <laughs> and uh you know that whole process sort of started out with us talking on the phone and me kind of just telling you like hey man this is what i've got i don't want some nasa board yeah I don't want also like anti a little... Anti-John Sasson. Yeah, yeah. This, this <laughs> board is really an anti-John Sasson board. That's really how I think about this board. No, no, like I didn't want like a little tiny board, like a travel rig, and I also didn't want... You know, there's so many guys that I think get overly obsessed with having this massive rig, and it's it ends up being a detriment to right. them. And they don't realize that like producers don't want you to have too much stuff that, especially if it takes you time to like dial things up. Right. That's when they're like, not worth it anymore. Right. So I wanted sort of a medium-sized rig that I could use for live gigs if I'm playing at the Baked Potato right. or I was going to say the Blue Whale, but RIP. But, yeah. um, Bummer. you know, p great places like that where I could play locally, but also I could take this to a session and basically use this as a having everything there. Yeah. And I think that we achieved we that and, and you really were able to take my ideas and actually put them into practice, which was very, very cool. Yeah, man. That's uh, kind of what we're all about is sort of seeing like seemingly impossible and just kind of like, whoa, I think we could squeeze a little bit more out of this <laughs> yep. pedal train one, <laughs> you know. And, and this was a board I, I just had the pedal yeah. train one. I had used it in the past and kind of like was like, I just have it here. And I puckered up a little do. bit when you said, I want all of this and I have a pedal train one. And I was like... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and we made some compromise. We took we a couple did. things off. Yeah. And uh, there's only so much you can do with physics, I guess. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, the way that I wanted to talk uh, uh, or talk to you about the board was so I, I've been a Yamaha endorser for like 11 years now, and they've been amazing to me. They make awesome. me tons of great stuff. And they acquired Line Six yeah. a certain amount of years ago. So I've had sort of an inside view of like what new Line Six products are coming out. Yeah. And they've sent me all the Helix stuff to awesome. like do, you know, R&D for them. And, I become obsessed with the HX effects, but I realized it was too big for this. Yeah. So we talked, I told, I basically told you like, I can get them to send me an HX stomp and I think that would be perfect. Yeah. Size wise. Totally. 
and um, maybe we could get into like how we wanted to think about this. I maybe the HX Stomp is a good place to start because yeah. I think that is sort of like the brains sort of, of the operation. Ground control. Yeah. Um, so basically, you had given me all these ideas with your drive section. You're really particular about you know certain gain stages, the way that everything was going to flow into each other, the signal path, and all this, and you wanted it to end with the infamous infamous regular <laughs> regular famous because i think infamous <laughs> is a negative thing uh the ge7 equalizer um with its weak led yeah which that's will something we're gonna that's we'll the figure one out thing we're gonna get fixed yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and basically you were asking um you know how can we integrate these gain stages and then you have these delay pedals and then you were talking about using the hx stomp as sort of a utility you know, for extra effects and this and that. And we were like, cool. So we'll put it probably towards the end after the volume pedal, before the delay effects and all this. And then we kept texting back and forth as can happen with gear. Yep. And um, we came up with the idea and we said, how about if we put your gain section into the effects loop of the HX stomp and then you can put effects before and after if you wanted yep. um, sort of like if you wanted to use pitch effects whammy effects or whatever usually that stuff you want it to track well so you want it before all your gain stuff um, and then you can throw delays after or mod stuff after mod stuff before so you got really in this little space you got tons of options and yep. it's almost I mean you pretty much can do anything I mean this guy's got fuzzes if you want phasers all the stuff is in here plus the killer analog stuff and this digital stuff here so yeah and and the, pretty much the way so i sort of picked these other pedals based around what i like to use in the hx stomp so like my primary use for the hx stomp i don't use any of the cabs or or the amps um in here this is basically functioning as a pedal board yeah right and sort of a routing on a system. pedal board <laughs> a pedal board on a pedal board yeah. but ma mainly what i use this for is stuff like modulation, reverbs, and delays that are different than this. Like, right. I'm a huge fan of Bucket Brigade analog delays. I love the Aquapus, but it's really big. Yeah. And we couldn't fit it on. It was kind of like the L cap I needed there. And then this is sort of, this is awesome. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But like, I love the Aquapus or like a DM2, which I actually don't own. I, I'd like to. But the Bucket Brigade analog delay in the HX Stomp is awesome. It's re really accurate. Yeah. I, they did a I, great job on that stuff. They did an awesome job. And like, I like using phasers and stuff, but like, I don't use them enough to need them on a board that's medium sized. Right. So the, I sort of treat the HX Stomp as like, if I'm in the studio and a producer's like, what about a phaser? Or I throw the idea out. I've got it you here. Got and like, the script logo phaser in here is great too. So. Yeah. This is sort of my catch-all, especially in the studio, this becomes even more handy. Live, I'll have a couple things set up yeah, and maybe like an always-on thing. And obviously, I've got the loop of this. But yeah. um, this is really a studio tool primarily yeah. for this rig. Yeah. Um, and you were able to bring that to life by us chatting. And I, yeah. that's really great because it, it, I I've already used it on some sessions and live stuff, and it really comes in super handy yeah i mean you know the more we talk and everything it's like i think i think josh might like this yeah let's talk about that and yeah. then we bring it up and then all, all of a sudden we're kind of changing things a little bit and um, i think it's just really important to like be aware of like what the player is after and you know how can we make this even more flexible as flexible as possible um and you know getting it out of such a small setup is there's a lot here there's a lot here and there's even more i mean you were talking about you provided me with like 10 gain stage options <laughs> and i was like okay that was a small group yeah, yeah. and i was like uh let's let's be sensible here think about this a little bit uh so then he was saying well these are my mainstays you know he you had just gotten this tumnus mm -hmm. and you had this westwood coming in um and obviously, we're all pretty much a big fan of the Maxon SD9. How can you not be? Which, when we started this, I had not... Oh, right. I did not own... In fact, all three of these are pretty new pedals to me. Yeah. Which is funny, but they the reason that I wanted them was the very specific function. So the way... And we talked about this, and, and we can talk about the... Maybe you can tell them about the order of it. But yeah. for me, the way that I use the Tumnus is primarily like... It's got a very minor mid boost yeah. and it's got kind of a classic rock. So if I'm doing like Aerosmith or Zeppelin or stones, this is amazing right. for that. That's yeah. what the Tumnus is Which for. Which is surprising because usually a Klon is not 
really the highest, chunkiest gain yeah. pedal in the world ever. But this one... This one has so much there. So I run it kind of like this, where it's like the volume and treble are sort of at noon most of the time. But this gain on here, it's amazing how much headroom and gain this pedal has. Yeah. Now, I don't always have it engaged, but the nice thing is it's available. So if right. I want to go... Like, I think of this as basically like everything up until the 80s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As yeah. far as like gain, that makes sense. amount of gain. Right. Um, so like up until a JCM 800, this will do all that stuff. But if you, if you turn the gain down there, you can get a very minor boost. But because it's a hard clipper, it's, you get a little bit of that sort of tightness from it. Right. And, and it doesn't sag a bunch. Right. So that's what that's for. The Westwood here, and this is going to go, go into... Uh, overused terminology yeah, yeah. <laughs> transparent it's transparent but yikes <laughs> you would but you would say like you even mentioned this this is an incredibly transparent pedal. yeah it, we had a uh, the first time we plugged the board in um just kind of playing through it and this and that and i saw him strum a chord with the pedal off and then he turned it on and i wasn't looking and i just said that's literally the same sound with more gain yeah it's like it doesn't i don't know i know that it's such a buzzword, buzz kill word. Yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it really is basically your amp plus gain. Yeah, and if people want to reference, like as far as something that that's close to, it's in the ballpark of a Timmy. Yeah, it's that's a, kind of the it's vibe, a yeah. little different, and you own an actual original yeah. Paul Cochran Timmy. Yeah. Um, but this Earthquaker device Westwood is an amazing pedal, and I really Very this cool is probably pedal, yeah. my like if I'm playing and I love my amp sound and I'm not doing anything in the rock world, it's more like maybe funk or soul, and I just want a little bit of just a little bit there, Some edge. or, or yeah. even clean like arpeggios with delay. This is I'm not going to go to the Tumnus for of that, course. and definitely yeah. not the SD9. Yeah. Um. So this the Maxon SD9 is sort of my like. Mike Landau love pedal. How can you not? Um, Come on. I, I just, it's this, so this is more a distortion ish pedal. Definitely. But the yeah. reason that I picked this over some other distortion pedals that I have that I like, like the Fat Sandwich by Way Huge, is this cleans up like a fuzz. Yeah. That's, that's the secret sauce. That's why this is actually a great distortion pedal to have because it doesn't only function as a distortion pedal. Right. Um, so that's why I picked that over it. Like I said, I've got a lot of other higher like i love the carl martin plexi tone for that sort of like eddie van halen modded plexi thing but that pedal doesn't clean up right it's sort of like you want to go machine balls in modded yeah. plexi that's the one so that's what that's there for very cool then we have this this is an original made in japan ge7 boss pedal that like you said is a very famous yeah pedal um, lots of guys it's a secret weapon and you were so smart about the way you did this because th l this is actually the perfect point to bring in the patch point which oh yeah i threw out there and you made happen do you want to yeah. maybe explain what you did yeah. to make the patch point ready uh and where it comes in the chain because totally. i think that that's something that that many people have been like god i gotta do that to my board yeah it's actually i mean it's got me wanting to do i said <laughs> I, need to, I need to get one of these now uh so basically like I said, he had a lot of gain options, and I said, that's great. Uh, we got to consider the size. Consolidate. So we picked the main ingredients. Uh, the GE7, we put at the end of the gain stages because you want to be able to shape the distortion sound. Let's say you're putting down layers in the studio or whatever. Um, you, need, you need them to be in a certain space. You can really change the character of these pedals with this guy. So I said, well, what you can do if you have a bunch of gain pedals, you like to move in and out, you know, maybe sometimes a uh, Marshall type, maybe like, um, you know, the way huge super lead or something like that is heavier. You don't always use it, but you like to have it. Yeah. Um, so I said, well, let's make this patch point here. Um, basically, all it is is just a little simple interface, um, which are becoming more and more common these days, which is great because they're so handy. Um, Basically, all it is is your guitar goes in, it goes out to all this stuff. Um, in this case, you know, we're going from in here, we go into this guy, all these guys go in here, and then we go into all this other stuff. Um, the cool thing about it is it keeps, first of all, all your inputs and outputs in a very convenient space. So you got input here, output here, to your amp, everything is together. Um, now, we got this patch point send and return, you can plug any gain pedal, distortion pedal, fuzz pedal, whatever you want before the GE7, and it basically puts the pedal right in here, off the board. 
so that if it's something, a utility thing you don't use all the time, you can just plug into this send and return, and it's like having it in between these two guys right here. So let's say you got a Univibe, and you like it after your gain stages. You can plug that in, and it'll be right over here. Um, we also added a convenient 9-volt pass-through that takes 9 volts from the True Tone power supply. And you can just keep everything conveniently off-board. You don't have to reach under. You don't have to plug your amp in anywhere else. Everything is just right here and convenient. And and I love the the way that you did that because I, I treat the, the GE7 in several different ways. Sometimes I'll put it absolutely flat and use it without any of these on right. as a as a lead boost. Lead boost, yeah. Sometimes Classic. I will use it as a certain like let's say I love the medium gain sound out of the Westwood. I might boost this up like three or four or five dB and then take eight hundred and just Give do a that. Bump. Yeah. And now I've got like a lead tone based on this. And then obviously there's a ton of more radical things oh, you can yeah. do with this. Lots obviously, of yeah. But maybe let's grab a couple of those pedals you've got there because we can talk about where we would put them in the line. So like this super lead, I would probably put, you know, at the patch point. But for instance, the Univibe, which is go. by the way, this is an amazing pedal, way huge. I'm a huge George Trips fanboy. Huge so and small. Yes, and uh, yeah, this is yeah, it's amazing because I have a lot of the old ones in there, a lot bigger. This is an amazing Univibe. This is the Revibe by Mulan, and the cool thing, and we talked about this before. Univibe is an interesting one because you can go sort of Trower or Hendrix which, and yeah. put it before. Yep. Like so, we could put this at the beginning without using the patch point. Yep. Using it before the Tumnus. Yep. Or we can use it after and put it at the patch point, yep. which would here. be there. And, and that really does end up changing it's the sound of the Univibe different completely. Quality, yeah. But the way that we have it routed, you can do both. You can do both, yeah. Which is awesome. And if yeah. I wanted to use the Shanks Fuzz, there you go. which I, this Vemeram Shanks Fuzz is an absolutely amazing pedal. This is probably my favorite fuzz of all time. I love this pedal. But if we wanted to put this before the Tumnus... Yep. And then put the Univibe at the patch point. After everything. After uh, the Maxon, boom, there right. we go. So that is is a really important thing. And then there's certain pedals that, like this Carl Martin AC tone, which is a little chipped up because I've I use it and it's Use the been, hell out of it. But this is sort of an amp in a box type pedal to get AC 30 type sound. But this pedal... I don't use it quite enough to have on the board, but I love it as an option, as a patch-in. Yeah. And I've already used it in the studio doing that. So, like, the patch-in has already come in super handy. So I'm very, I'm very glad it's and there. And it's cool because, like, something like the AC tone, which is like an amp in a box, you know, typically you run pedals into an amp. So we like to treat any amp in a box pedals as sort of the last, you know, gain stage yeah. before the EQ so that it's like you're hitting an amp with all these gain stages, and so that's why it's also convenient to have. And then having, having the GE7 there, sometimes I treat it the way that like Gilmore does, where especially if I have one gain pedal on, the way that, you know, if people don't know, Gilmore would do this thing where almost every pedal would have its own GE7, right. or its own EQ of yeah. some kind. Yeah. Um, and I, there's some old photos, if you go online, you can find it, but he would have his big muffs, Especially and, a big muff and the rat that needs help. <laughs> yes, like and he would, you know, the big muff probably take down a hundred and d keep it from getting too chubby. But right. that's a great way to use it. So if I'm using one main gain stage and I literally want to make that sound however I want, it's perfect having that patch point before this, so I can use the GE7 as a means to EQ either a couple stacked or just one. Yeah, and, totally. Um, yeah, and the, then it doesn't affect all your beautiful delays and reverbs yes. because it's right before all that stuff. That's very You're nice. These back yeah, to you, man. Um, all right, let's talk about some of this stuff up here. Yeah. So um, maybe we'll get to the HX stop in a second, but for yeah. the delay stuff, um, the way that I treat this is I sort of treat the Strymon El Capistan, which is an amazing tape echo pedal. I treat this as sort of my David Gilmore, another reference to Gilmore, yeah. where medium to long delays yeah of course um it has a good slapback but i really love the slapback from a bucket brigade so i oftentimes use the there bucket brigade in the hx stomp and this is my medium to long delay and then the dispatch master another earthquaker device pedal i really treat as my like oh you want ambient stuff it's got yeah. reverb and delay in one it's really dark stays out of the way of the original transients because you can create this nice pad 
and everything's kind of ethereal, but it doesn't get in the front and take over. Exactly, and you don't have to dial in more than one thing. Like right. it's so nice to have it. Like, oh, I want a medium amount of reverb. Uh, keep the mix about there. The time, you know, probably that's probably around like two hundred, three hundred milliseconds. I had used one of these before, and when you brought it in, I said, I, I, "Wouldn't you want like a second switch, or like how do you control both of them, or how do you make yeah. use?" And you just played it, and I said, "Oh." Yep, and you can you, turn. It's perfect. The cool thing is, you can actually make it reverb only if you want it. And it's definitely not like a spring sound to my ears. It's, I don't know exactly what it's based on, but if you turn the time off, you can actually make this function as just a reverb. And then I believe it's the repeat knob functions as your like EQ of oh, your wow. reverb. That's killer. So it's an amazing pedal, and this is my sort of like ambient. Okay, Earthquaker. It's amazing, and Shoot. I I really want to give a big shout out to Earthquaker because they sent me some pedals and. Literally within two days of playing them, they both ended up on a board with not that many pedals. Yeah. So, and I have became mainstays. I have a lot. Yeah. Like, as we've mentioned you saw the boxes of pedals. That's a couple boxes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then like t- more tubs than boxes. Tubs, yep. But the fact that after two days of playing, these ended up on a board with not an incredible amount of pedals just shows how great the Earthquake yeah. stuff is. Um, and then this A3 volume pedal. Now we have, this is my buddy, John Schroeder. Stole it. Big shout out to John Schroeder. I, I kind of, yeah, it's a sort of a, a temporary thievery on my That's part. That's cool. But this is John's pedal. We have his name taped out because he's got his name on the plate here. But of course. Big shout out to John Schroeder. <laughs> he introduced me to the people at A3. They make amazing pedals. And this has one of the best, just like the sweep of it is perfect. And I really like this pedal. It's built really well. It's sort of like a pimped out version of an Ernie Ball. Oh, yeah. Um, with- pimped out it is, man. It's, it's crazy what a subtle, you would think, what, what you know, volume pedals. They're yeah. all, what, what the heck? You know, you got dual band, you got magnets, you got strings, whatever. I don't know. But that's got some extra smooth, buttery action that's, I don't know how to explain it. It's just nice. It, yeah. It, Everything comes in where you expect it to. There's yeah. no surprising, oh, that's a little, you know, on the beginning of it, there's a little jump, or at the end, there's, it's just very smooth. It's, it's really famous. smooth, and I trust John Schroeder, the guy who introduced me to these guys, but also I saw on their website that Michael Thompson was a huge user of this, and I, I play a lot of Michael Thompson He's stuff all right. with Shania, because <laughs> he played on her last studio, like the Up Dude, album. That's So I recreate some of his parts. Those are some shoes to fill, man. It's some shoes, right? <laughs> but... Because he's a studio guy, he uses a volume pedal a ton. Of course. And I was like, if he's swearing by this... He's the man. It's like, it's like getting uh, Gilmore to swear by a delay pedal. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when it's that in their wheelhouse, you're kind of like, okay, I, I trust this. I trust that, totally. And um, yeah, so that's the setup. And then this, uh, thank you to Rockstock for sending out this, um, these extra switches to the HX Stomp. Yeah. And maybe you want to talk about how you, yeah, you know, routed that in. Totally, because, um, you know... The Stomp, super powerful, awesome tool, but it's very compact. There's only so much they can fit on there. Um, so these little guys come in handy because now you can add, for you where you use it as a pedal board, instead of like switching presets, mm-hmm. you know, it's nice to have direct access to most of the effects with switches instead of changing pages, changing snapshots or whatever. And I'm using this as my tuner too. Oh yeah. And I needed the tap tempo. The tap so tempo. We, we already lost one of the switches immediately. Right. Yeah. So now we've got four switches plus a tap and uh tuner. Yeah. And that's really all I need. Like I'm not, I don't have more than four of these on at once really right. ever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's a really convenient tool to have. And then if you wanted to, you could set it up to change page modes. You can set it up to change presets snapshots if that were to come up so you got lots of options lots of flexibility and the midi's here if i needed it but once again this isn't for right like when i'm out with shania i have a kemper right because it's it's a necessity for that gig i have 120 sounds for the show two thousand guitars yeah i mean every song i have a new guitar there's a million sounds and they're not really related sometimes they're really disparate right so using a pedal board would just be complete insanity and like a lot more headache than necessary yeah but for the for this stuff i don't really plan on using the midi but it's there right that's what's cool about it being there is that you know and if if everything went down i if my amp blew up I could use this, amps. and I've used the Helix as as an amp, you know, simulator. I have the yeah. Celestian IRs and stuff, and it sounds good. I, I still prefer a real amp 
as a lot of players do. Yeah. But the fact that that's there as a safety net totally. is huge. And being familiar with Kemper, so you know exactly what to expect from amp modeling. And so you know you're not going to get room feel. You're not going to get volume movement. It's not going to be any of that. But because um, for some guys, it can be pretty jarring. It was for me when I first got into, you know, using direct rigs and stuff like that. So I think that experience really helps. And I think the Line 6 stuff, especially with the latest updates, it's killer it's stuff. Yeah. And you made some changes in there that just so people know. Yeah. Um, uh, just, just so people know, there are some changes that you made in here just to make things a little bit yeah. more simple. So you changed the impedance stuff to like yeah, auto Yeah, so basically, change, like, yeah, we did it so that every pedal, there's a new setting, every pedal on, the first pedal on sets the impedance instead of the first pedal in the chain, which helps with, um, you know, just getting a nicer response. It doesn't color your tone. As, here we go again, buzzwords. <laughs> doesn't color your tone as much. Um, and also, it just gives a more realistic feel for the models because they react how they... Especially the fuzzes. Yeah, especially the fuzzes. Yep. makes them a lot more usable. Um, and we just, you, you know... set it so the volume, if this gets, if this gets bumped, that, that doesn't affect it anything. It only affects the headphone out, so that's very helpful because this moves a lot in the case and all that. So. And that could really, especially because all my gain pedals are routed through there, if, that, if he didn't do that, which I, don't, I didn't know about that, yeah. that could really jack up a lot of stuff. So, yeah. um, and then we got the one spot... Power supply to CS12 the on the bottom. CS12 powering all of this, and you're routing on it. Everything is awesome. And Thanks, I just, man. you know, I just wanted to say that, you know, if somebody wants a pedal board made, come to Johnny Gomez because th this this was an absolute joy to make this. And um, same, the the whole process was really easy, and I, I felt like the whole time, like Sausen said to me, that you actually really cared about making this thing Thanks, great, man. and. Like I said, there's a lot of people good at stuff that don't actually care about the thing they're doing. You know what I'm saying? And th that's, that means a lot. That's the next step. So I Thanks, just want to say I appreciate it. And it's um, a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm excited cool. to take this. I can't wait till there's actual live shows again. Yeah. So I could really, you know, take I can't it into wait that either. world. I'm yeah. front row center, man. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for tuning cool. in, y'all. Uh, we'll stay tuned for some guitar playing from the man. We're cute rigs. I'm Johnny G. It ain't a rig till it's cute. <laughs>